and um, we'll do a bit of an introduction around the around the team here. Um, firstly, thank you very much for for everyone signing up today. Um, we we do have a, a really exciting announcement um, in some of the work that Flowpower have been uh, building up over the past couple of months, and um, and we're really excited to come to fruition with this uh, new program that um, that we've just recently launched with SA Government. Um, uh, firstly, I, I do want to thank the South Australian Government for supporting Flowpower in, in this uh, exciting program where we're looking to encourage the take-up of demand response um, in supporting the South Australian electricity grid. So, um, so yeah, we, we're really fortunate to, uh, to be working closely with SA Government and we thank them for their support uh, to, uh, to roll this out. Um, uh, we'll just do a quick introduction. So for those of you who haven't heard of Flowpower or haven't met us before, my name's Nathaniel. Uh, I head up the engineering team here at Flowpower. Um, we do a number of things from, from uh, demand response being one of them, but also uh, energy management, energy efficiency works, as well as uh, solar generation, renewable generation storage, um, and a whole range of other things associated and centered around energy. Um, I might just pass over to Brad. Brad, if you can do a quick introduction, please. Hi guys, uh, I'm an energy engineer working at Flowpower. Um, my main role is to assist our customers in uh, their energy strategies, uh, mostly around how to do demand response. Great, thanks Brad. And I'll pass over yep. to Steve. Yeah, thanks Nathaniel. Uh, yes, my name is Stephen Cook. Um, I'm based here in the Barossa Valley in South Australia. Um, so I'm a bit of a new addition to Flowpower. My, my background is actually in the wine industry. So I've been involved in uh, wine maker by trade, um, winery management, winery operations, and then sustainable development uh, for a number of years. Um, last business I worked for was a long-term um, partner for with uh, Flowpower and we sort of uh, transitioned across to the wholesale market firstly, and then 100% um, renewable energy through uh, through um, you know solar PPAs um, uh, and wooden PPAs and uh, behind the meter solar. So yes, it's a long association, and it's great to be on this side of the business. Yes, Back thanks, here. Stephen. And um, and yes, yeah, Stephen will also be providing some insights as well from uh, some of the customers or users' perspective. Uh, associated with demand response and how um, how uh, yeah energy users can take advantage of that too. So um, so thanks for jumping on board, Stephen. Um, okay, so so just a quick introduction about Flowpower. Um, really, we we are an energy retailer, but we see ourselves more as an energy management company that just so happens to have a retail license. Um, ultimately, uh, one of our biggest drivers is to is 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 um is to put the the, the customers into in the centre of the market and work towards a net zero carbon future. And the way we're doing that at the moment is really about giving customers access to the wholesale market. Um, but we know that by doing so, um, what that allows us to do is, is work with customers to enable more renewable generation to be injected onto the grid. But in doing so, it does have a consequence in that it's a lot more diverse, a lot more dynamic. And that's where demand response kicks in, which Brad will go through in a lot more detail. Um, but ultimately, uh, from Flowpower's perspective, demand response is a core component to where we are striving to, towards um, working towards a net zero carbon future. And, um, and with a lot of the trend and the news and, and the, the volatility happening on the South Australian grid, uh, we see programs like this one as a major initiative to support what's happening across South Australia, uh, but also uh, look for opportunities here where energy users can um, can take advantage of these programs and reduce their costs and and reduce their energy use as well. So, so yeah, uh, this is really core to our to to our purpose and what we do. So we're we're really pleased to be able to share this with you. Um, if we go into just a quick agenda over the um, today's webinar, um, Brad will be going through an overview of demand response just to highlight what it is for those of you. Um, who may be new to this uh, to this uh, to this program? Um, I'll be covering a little bit more detail about the specific program itself and some of the funding opportunities and the scope and technologies that will be included uh, in this program. Stephen will work through a couple of case studies to show what what are the tangible benefits that could be possible from demand response, and then we'll close it off with a bit of a Q and A. So um, so to kick off, I'll um, I'll pass over to Brad. Please take over. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we'll probably kick off with a with a poll first, Nat, won't we? 
or are you going to yes. give some market context? Um, oh, sure, sure. So let's click yeah. down to the poll. So you're right. Yeah, let's. Um, yeah. Well, before we before we do the poll, I just want to make a distinction uh, between demand response and demand management. So the poll is going to be about. Uh, we we just want to know what you guys know about demand response already. Um, in South Australia, you guys might be familiar with what we call demand management, which is, um, it's a type of demand response, but it's all about peak lopping um, in response to a network tariff that you guys have over there, uh, peak lopping between 3 and 7 p.m. So when we ask this question about demand response, we're specifically talking about the type of demand response where you're responding to wholesale market prices or participating in a program like RERT, um, not necessarily that demand management um, that a lot of the uh, businesses in SA may be familiar with. So yeah, go for it. So we'll give you guys about a minute um, or so just to kind of uh, give us your understanding of of what demand response is and, um, and to what level of uh, exposure and understanding you have to it. Okay, so another more, five more seconds or so. Okay, great. Cool. So it looks like a lot of you understand the concept. Um, we've got a few people that already do demand response, which is great, and someone who hasn't heard of it. So um, that's really good. It's a nice varied response. Um, for those of you who don't have a deep understanding, we'll just cover a few of the hows and whys uh, and what's later on about demand response. So I guess the, the why does demand response exist question, um, well, number one, it unlocks massive value for your business. So you can save massive money uh, on your energy bill by avoiding the high price spikes in the wholesale market and also uh, accessing programs like RERT. Um, little side note about RERT, for those of you who aren't aware, um, RERT is an emergency demand response program run by the market operator uh, where they'll pay pretty large incentives to um, energy users who are willing to do demand response on the very hottest days of the year, those really high network strain um, days of the year. Um, so yeah, for those of you who don't know what RERT is. Uh, the next why is it keeps the lights on for everyone. So over in SA, you guys are um, very familiar with the, the consequences of blackouts and brownouts. So Demand response become a really important mechanism to prevent those happening um, by reducing demand at those the worst times. Um, and lastly, um, it's small effort for great savings. So when we talk about demand response, we're talking about powering down or reducing load for for a few hours a year. You know, it, it might be three, it might be five, it might be ten hours a year. Like it's really not a huge amount of time, um, and you do see pretty enormous savings for small efforts. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of reasons to be doing demand response. Um, over the last few years, we've definitely seen uh, an uptick in demand response interest. So it's becoming more and more prevalent. Um, and some of the reasons for that is an increase in kind of market price volatility. Um, that's been driven in part by closure of some coal power stations. Um, Hazelwood was a big one for sure. Um, the other big difference, um, with more interest in demand response is policy changes. So um, a few years ago, if you wanted to participate in a program like RERT, you just had to have the load yourself. And then AMO allowed aggregators to come along and take lots of small amounts of demand responsive load and kind of aggregate them together and treat them like one large load. Um, and then lastly, we've just got more demand response services offered in the market. You know, we've got lots of providers, lots of services, and lots of ways for businesses to kind of add value with demand response. So yeah, definitely seen an uptick. And a lot of businesses that we work with see demand response as BAU now, because um, it's so beneficial. Um, before we go into the specifics of the actual funding we've got available, I just want to go over um, a little bit more about demand response um, and what you can do to benefit. Um, so I'll do that by looking at this chart on the right. So what we've done here is we've grouped all the wholesale price intervals for 2019 into a, a number of buckets. And what, what I want you to notice is most of the year hovers somewhere between um, $0 a megawatt hour and $300 a megawatt hour, which is um, 0 cents a kilowatt hour and 30 cents a kilowatt hour for, for those who work in cents per kilowatt hour. 
But on the right hand side, you see, um, let's say, let's call it 10 hours a year where the price is over $10,000 a megawatt hour. So by taking advantage, uh, by taking action during those high price intervals, you can actually benefit massively. Now, the other thing I want you to look at here is the huge number of intervals that are actually less than $0 a megawatt hour. And those are actually intervals where if you're spot exposed um, to the wholesale market, you can actually get paid to use energy during those periods. So that's something we'll talk about later um, when we get into the specifics of what we can actually do here to bring value to your business through demand response. But what I just want to point out here is no matter where your business is at in their energy journey, there's ways you can benefit from demand response through accessing this funding. So if you're on wholesale, if you're on fixed, if you've done demand response before or you've never heard of demand response, um, if you have on-site generation assets like solar or diesel gen sets, like there's, there's ways we can add revenue streams to those assets. Um, and we're going to talk a bit about the specifics of the benefits um, throughout this webinar. So I guess without further ado, I'll hand back to you, Nat, and we can talk about the actual program of funding. Great. <clears throat> Thanks, Brad. Um, good overview there. So, so guys, we'll get stuck into the program mechanics here and, and give you an overview of what this includes. So basically, we're working with South Australian government to provide subsidised funding to install uh, and work with energy users to implement, so install control and technologies to either automate or send signals out to enable energy users to execute or activate demand response during those times, you know, the handful of times per year. Um, basically, <clears throat> as part of the program, uh, we do have uh, control technologies that are able to be completely subsidised as part of the program. Um, in addition to that, um, these technologies enable monitoring as well as remote control of certain loads and equipment. Um, but on top of that as well, uh, that we, we also have an in-house engineering team that is also part of this fund arrangement. And so, so we want to work we want to work through what those details specifically look like um, so you can understand what you could potentially tap into or access. Um, so then you can implement demand response across your site. And for those that may be a bit more sophisticated, um, you may also want to look at a more uh, comprehensive strategy where we're implementing uh, SCADA control systems and, and a bit more of a, uh, a larger DR activity as opposed to just simply turning one or two loads off or, um, or generators on. So, um, so we'll flick into the next slide just to give you an overview of some of the details here. Okay, so what does the program offer? So as a minimum, um, Flowpower has developed a K-Watch controller which, which gets installed typically um, on, your, on your utility retail meter as well as can enable the, um, uh, if it's installed on a generator, it can enable the activation or the shutdown of a single load. And so we've been deploying these, um, these controllers over a number of years now to facilitate our demand response activities. And part of these is, um, is, is this is connected back to our centralized platform where we have a market monitoring services team which operate 24 seven to monitor what's happening across the market. And in the event where we see an impending demand response activity, um, we have the ability to, to initiate a demand response event upon your authorization. And so these controls can be installed um, across your sites, whereby we will help you identify what loads and what generators could be suitable to participate in a demand response event. And in doing so, um, the controller and the time that we spend on site is completely subsidized as part of the program. And so that's that's something that um, you don't need to pay for. Um, and, and in working with SA government, there is an allocation there uh, to cover those costs as well as the, the time for energy needs to head out there and scope up the project. Now, in addition to that, um, we might go to the next slide, uh, Louis, please. So in, in addition to the Cowatch controller, um, sorry, we'll flip back one back a bit um, to the previous one with the yep. So in addition to that, so number one is the Cowatch controller. Number two is access to our energy engineers to scope up the, the project and work with you to execute a DR event. But then number three, now if your site's a bit more complex, it's a bit more technical, 
And um, rather than just turning on one generator or turning on a single pump, you may have a series of pumps or you may have a series of refrigeration loads that need to work in sequence. And under these scenarios, there might be an existing SCADA control system that are operating these loads. Um, and in that case, we, we may need to interface our KWatch controller to those SCADA systems. Now, if it's a single KWatch controller that can be connected to that, that's fine. Again, the controller and our time for that scope is all subsidized as part of the program. But if you need additional control systems where you need to um, either orchestrate a number of loads or a number of generators or a number of solar PV systems, they need to be uh, controlled simultaneously. Um, there is also funding, there is also subsidized funding for the in installation of control systems. And so this is quite new because usually um, the government, SA government hasn't done this before where we've looked at a number of, uh, where we've looked at installing a number of control systems because that does vary from site to site. But what we didn't want to do was keep it limited to a single KWatch controller because we are trying to encourage the take up across a number of different industries and applications and scenarios. And we really want to spread this out as far as possible. So in the event where you may need additional control systems to, to execute your DR activity, we do have funding available for that too. And so there are some terms around that additional component, but again, we, we are encouraging the use of, of, that, of that source and, and funding source. And so, um, so we're trying to maximize this as much as possible. Okay, we'll jump onto the next slide, please. Okay, so this gives you a, a quick overview of what are some of the typical loads that we've worked with in the past with our customers. So backup generators, diesel generators, and so forth, these are, these are ideal um, assets that can be quickly monetized, either if you're on the spot market looking to avoid that peak price, or if you are registered on the RERT program and are looking to, um, looking to reduce your load during those RERT payments to, to, to get access to those RERT payments. So backup generators is a quick one, again, that we can control with either our KWH controller or, 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 or an additional control system that, um, that may be required. Um, pumping and refrigeration and HVAC loads, again, these are all excellent um, assets that can be either regulated down um, where, we can, where we need to maintain a certain base load, or we may be able to potentially turn things off for a momentary period of time. Um, again, we would, we would uh, work with you to identify what loads, what um, operational procedures would be appropriate for your site. Um, and it wouldn't be in such a way where we would typically turn everything off without, without reason. We'd have to work with you to ensure that your production, your operations are not uh, negatively impacted. But these are typically um, great assets that, that can participate in this program and would contribute significantly as part of your demand response, uh, yeah, demand response activities. Okay, so, um, so one of the things that we also wanted to highlight as well, and I, I hinted on this earlier, um, demand response is, so in terms of the, it is not a, a fully automated program. Um, we appreciate that everyone has their operations and has, you know, um, sensitive activities that they need to maintain on site. Um, and we also know that, that you have either product or some form of um, you know, business activities that are critical, that, that, that can't be compromised. And so as part of the program, you know, as, as we try to identify what loads are suitable to, to be either ramped down or turned off, um, we will work with you to ensure that the, the operation of these assets are done in accordance with your requirements. And that in the in the time when a demand response event is required, um, we will ensure that there is an auth authorization process. So then these things are not being turned off automatically without your notice. Now we've been doing this for a number of years now, and we have gone through this process where um, where it is crucial that the end users who are participating in these programs are fully aware of what happens. And so as part of that process, we have developed a framework to ensure that um, equipment isn't just turning off automatically without your notice. Uh, so rest assured, throughout the whole process, you will be the, the key authorization. So then, um, so then you know when things are turning off and you are actually uh, you're, you're actually the, the, final, um, the final trigger 
to say, yep, let's turn off equipment or let's turn on our generators. Okay, so so guys, I know that that was quick, but um, but we just want to summarize what we just went through for the last five minutes. Um, again, the the SA Building Intelligent Demand Response Program is a subsidized program supported by SA government, where we will uh, fund the the supply and installation of our CareWatch controllers to facilitate a demand response event. And that includes the engineering time associated with that. So as part of those benefits, you do have access to the subsidized funding for those controls and services. In addition to that, we, you're, as part of participating in this program, you get to monetize some of your existing assets that may be just idling um, on your site and that's being underutilized. So, so if you have generators, um, solar, and these are the pumping loads and, and, and refrigeration loads, these are all great assets that you can monetize and add a little bit more extra revenue or reduce your cost over. Um, similarly, through those processes, this is an opportunity to, to secure additional income. Um, so again, uh, we'll work with you to register you under the work program if you haven't done so already. But all these things are opportunities to, um, to, to increase your revenue streams. And then the last piece there, uh, like we emphasized earlier, um, uh, throughout it, the entire process, you have full control and authorization of how your loads are operating. Now, again, um, it's not our role to, to just turn the equipment off or on or, or up and down. It's our role to facilitate the process with your authorization, work with you to ensure that you understand how these things are, are meant to be facilitated. And then when everything is aligned, we can then pull the trigger and, and um, yeah, and take advantage of those opportunities. Okay, so, so while we've gone through this program, there are a couple of um, usual things that pop up when we are speaking to customers around why they can't do demand response. And there's, there's three here that are, that are quite common when, um, uh, when, when someone's considering it. You know, the first one is I can't stop my operations. Um, again, we, we've gone through this, uh, we went through this briefly that we will work with you to identify how and where we can, you know, what loads would be appropriate for this program, but ultimately, it, it's your call as to whether your site and your operations are suitable for this. Um, another one is this isn't my KPIs. And, and this is usually one that comes from um, larger organisations whereby commercial people are making decisions, but then the operational guys on site aren't connected to those decision making you know, outcomes. And so uh, as we work through this program with you, we acknowledge that we need to work um, with your whole organisation. So then when it comes time to implement demand response, everyone knows how, well, what the purpose is, what the, what the plan is. And then when it comes to you know, game day, um, basically we can all execute according to the demand response plan. And then DR being too hard. Again, this is another, another symptom of you know, um, lack of communication, lack of coordination. So again, um, we do understand that these are barriers that, that you know, many energy users experience. And so as part of that process, our engineers and our, you know, our, our team will help you work through those processes and help you engage with the, with the wider organisation to ensure that these DR activities can take place. Um, I, I guess before we jump to the next phase, um, I wanted to also highlight, and part of the reason why Stephen Cook is, uh, is, is on board here, is that he actually came from um, a, he, he was actually working with a previous customer of ours that facilitated demand response across their organisation, and so one of the one of the key things that we're we're interested in, um, in in why we've brought him on board is to actually go through some of the barriers or some of these barriers as to how energy users, uh, especially for wineries and, and irrigation companies, can can participate in demand response, and um, and yeah, uh, I guess engage with a wider team to ensure that this is done successfully. So, um, so I hope that that gives you a, a, a quick overview of the DR program. I'll pass it over to Stephen now to go through some of the case studies we've been through in the past. Yeah, thanks, Nathaniel. Um, and and that was a good lead in. And quite often, um, there, there's always reasons why not to do something. Um, and, and quite often, you know, yeah. people would have put up put these barriers up. Um, uh, one one thing that you know I always um, talk to people about is uh, look people. Most companies have done a lot of work over years and trying to reduce the either the price of electricity, <coughs> excuse me, or um, the amount of electricity they're using. But um, time of use is one of the big levers that you can pull. 
and um, it, I think it should always be seen as, as rather than a barrier, it's a real opportunity for a lot of businesses that they can lower their costs um, and provide so, um, some savings back to the business as well. So um, what we've got here is a couple of, or one case study to, to look at a little bit more deeply um, and try and understand um, you know, how we go about the process and what the benefits are, because if you're going to change your system, quite often you need to understand really um, you know, what is the value of doing that and, and taking the time to, to understand and implement the system. So here we've got um, the case of a, a small South Australian um, um, winery. They've been a partner for, with Flow Power since um, 2018. So they've signed up to a wholesale deal um, and been a market participant for some time. Um, they have, um, because of the price of electricity in the market, um, had a, a, um, a manual form of um, demand response, really responding to high priced events. Um, but, you know, it's been a journey and, and uh, Brad spoke about this earlier as well, um, that, that quite often, you know, it, it'll take a number of years to implement these systems uh, to get them up and running, but, you know, it, it's a process of continual improvement and investigation as you go along. So this, this company's got a good insight into where they use electricity, um, the, the amount of data that they can get on site, they can see what pieces of, um, uh, of equipment are using the electricity and when, and um, align that with their, their pattern of use as well. Uh, so, in, in, after, sorry, if we can just jump back for a minute. Well, yeah, uh, so we, we, we've worked with the, the company investigating um, exactly where they're using their electricity, what the costs are, um, and we've done some training with the, with the business as well and upskilling the staff and, and um, you know, working with them on how we can um, um, provide triggers, where the triggers are, where the cost benefits are, and how they implement that within their system. Um, so they participated with us um, over the summer and then March 2019. Um, they received their root events for participating in the root program. Um, again, it's a it's a wine um, case that we're looking at here. Uh, the biggest demand in the wine industry through, throughout most of the year is through um, refrigeration. So one of your biggest expenses. Um, and like we said, knowing your business, you can understand when it's critical, when it's not critical. Um, you know, we, there's always the comment that we're making wine. You know, it's all about quality. Um, but there's different times of year that, that it, it's more critical than others. Obviously, vintage is, is high priority in, in the heat of, heat of the summer. Um, but when you're doing maintenance cooling over the rest of the year, um, you know, you've got a big thermal mass, you've got a, a low ambient temperature, it's, it's less critical. Um, so it's identifying those opportunities. Okay, if we can jump to the next slide. So this is a, an event um, that took place on January 24th. So just looking at the chart first on the right hand side, um, we've got the um, base price of electricity in the spot market at the time that's just ticking along at five or six cents. Then it goes up to $13,000 um, a megawatt hour uh, for a period of about five hours. So this is quite a, quite a very significant event. So we look at um, the response from the winery over that time, they were basically able to shed their entire load um, that was used for refrigeration about that time um, and then brought it back online afterwards. And we don't see that sort of, um, sometimes you think, okay, well, we've got to turn it off and when I turn it back on, we're going to overcompensate and we, we're going to use more electricity. And, and quite often that, that that's not actually the case. Um, again, because you've got this big thermal mass and thermal load that's really just sitting there. So let's have a look at, at what the opportunity is and, and a lot of people really want to understand the dollars and cents and the financials behind it. Um, so we have a look at the, at the load, it's um, running at 230 kilowatts. Um, like I said, the, the, the time period was, was five hours. Um, so over that period, we're really looking, uh, well the RIP payment first up was, was about $5,000 megawatt hour. Uh, rep payments in that, that period. So it's giving you um, an income, let's call it an income, $5,750 for the event. Now we look at cost avoidance and this is the beauty of being in the wholesale market, you, you actually own your, your energy costs. So if you can shed that, that's a, that's a savings opportunity for this event. So 
again, um, 0.23 of a, of a megawatt hour for five hours. Spot price went up to $14,700 a megawatt hour. So it's, um, you know, we're looking close to $17,000 uh, just for one event in, in, in savings. And again, some I just want to reiterate, sometimes people look at the wholesale market and you'll say, okay, well, we have to respond to these events, um, you know, as opposed to having a fixed price. I would just like to say that the, the, all these events are actually priced into your fixed price that you're paying. Um, what, you, what you're doing in the wholesale market by avoiding these, you can actually lower your overall price of energy and have a, have a better outcome. So again, like I say, we've, we've been cutting back the amount of energy that we've been using over a period of time. Now, you know, it's, it's really all about your time of use to own your price. Yeah. So, so Stephen, this is this is interesting because um, if we look at that road payment, for example, of um, five thousand seven hundred and fifty. Um, that is that the payment going towards the 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 end user at the end of the day. That's correct. Yeah. So that yep. that's direct income, and, and that would be one event where there could be a handful of events uh, as per Brad's. Brad's uh, slide earlier, there could be 10 events that could occur um, across the year. That's right. And and look, this is a significant event. And I suppose, you know, what um, this leads into is is automation um, because you know, it, it's worth a manual intervention for this instance, but there's a lot more. And these these events might only occur like three or four times depending on the, on the summer, but there's a whole yeah. lot of other events that are happening much more frequently and, and to a... Mm. A much lower extent, um, which you probably wouldn't respond to yeah. manually. Once you automate these events, um, then it can just run in the background. And again, there, there are certain root events called, but you, you can have other signals. So you yeah. might put a, a signal against a price. Um, yeah. And what's I mean, increasingly important is um, solar ramp down because we are seeing negative pricing over the summer. Um, whereas if you're sort of feeding in, um, your, your solar, you're not really going to run out and shed, shed them down. You might not even be aware of negative pricing over the summer, but um, we can sort of link that into a price signal. Um, it stops generating while, while it's feeding in at negative price. So we can see that becoming more and more important um, as a form of demand response. Yeah, it's probably another thing to note here, Stephen, is if we were going to automate a shutdown process here, we can actually use things like the temperature of the cold storage as an input to that process. So we can have we can have a simple system that basically checks the temperature. If it falls above a critical level, we turn back on the cold storage. So th there are ways we can automate this to, to make it as easy as possible. And that's fundamentally what this funding is about. It's making demand response accessible and easy. Exactly. Thanks, Matt. And, and so looking at, um, again, we're talking about the journey. So through a um, um, demand response that we can provide. In this instance, it was 10 savings to the end of to the business. Um, if we look at automating that, so we, there's more events that we're responding to, we could, that, that can increase to um, 12 to 15%. And then if we build in this uh, ramp down, um, as a response to the negative pricing, we, that that's sort of been increased up then. Yep. So, so Stephen, you cut out a little bit there, but I think the the message here is that there is, um, you know, depending on the type of assets that you have across your sites, um, that the goal is to try and maximise, you know, the 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 opportunity across all of your assets, not just you know on your generators, not just solar, not just your load. Um, there, there is a whole number of, uh, there is a whole suite of opportunities available when you start to look at your various operations and the various loads and, and assets that you have on site. And again, we'll work with you to identify um, how you can monetize that as much as possible. Great. Okay, so so thanks, thanks David, for that. Um, uh, I guess so. We'll, we'll open it up to questions now, and uh, and yeah, if, if you do have a question, there is a chat or a question section on the right panel of your screen. Um, by all means, uh, feel free to to ask any questions you you like about the program or yeah, anything I guess about us or, or the program. 
Um, we, we have one question here from Mark. So what is the history of time of year for high priced events? Um, so it does, there are some times throughout the year where it is more common. Um, I might lean to Brad as well to add more detail here, but, but yes, there is a, it, it is, it can be seasonal. And, and so Brad, why yeah. is uh, Yeah, so the, the really big high price events typically occur in summer months and that's driven because it's a result of supply and demand. Demand's at its highest in summer when everyone's using the air conditioning. Um, industrial load is still pumping in late afternoon and you might have, the sun start to go down. So we lose all the solar generation across the nation. Um, that's like, we're talking late afternoons in the summer is probably the highest risk time of year. But in saying that we definitely do see events at other times of year. Like um, if we have unexpected events, like an interconnector coming down or, you know, tree falls on a power line, that, that type of thing, maybe a big generator uh, trips. Um, and I guess that's why we see the importance in automating demand response to some extent, at least, because a lot of the larger events we can see coming. So we can notify our customers and they can go about the manual steps that they take um, to do their load shedding. But when it comes to the unexpected stuff where, you know, tree falls on the power line, um, price spikes up to say $10,000 a megawatt hour for a half hour. If you've got systems in place um, you might actually be able to catch the majority of that, you know, if it's a diesel generator starting or um, some automatic load shedding based on a refrigeration temperature, like you can actually catch those smaller events as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, if, if I can just add one thing to that, it does tend to be um, sort of like early, early midsummer. Um, and for the, for the wine industry, you tend to be through those high priced events, um, you know, in December, January, um, before we really start ramping up um, vintage in, in February, March, April. Yeah, yeah. And, and even though the load uh, may be low during winter, um, RERT and uh, price spikes on the wholesale market do happen. Um, so while the opportunity may still be smaller, um, there is still opportunities there to to um, to capture, to, to, yeah, to uh, access, you know, additional income through, through those seasons as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so a couple more questions here. Uh, do I have to be a flow power customer? Um, the, the short answer is no. You do not have to be a flow power retail customer to participate in this program. Um, although if you are, uh, it's, it's likely that you do have access to the wholesale spot market in some form. And in doing so, it does increase the value of this program exponentially uh, because not only are you able to take advantage of programs like BERT, but you're also um, the technology and the processes that will help you implement uh, can be a part of your energy management strategy that you can facilitate throughout the year. Um, and that way, you're potentially minimising uh, your costs throughout the year. Um, by being able to to shave off some of those uh, high price events as well as manage your peak loads. Okay, um, what if I don't perform on the day when I need to shut down? Okay, so um, so as part of the program, there is no obligation for for you to perform on on a emergency road day or a market cap event or anything of the such. Um, again, this, this program is being designed to encourage as many um, energy users to participate on, on the, you know, in the program with the, with the goal of uh, maximising demand response across the South Australian grid. Now, mm -hmm. um, ultimately, we would work with you to try and um, you know, facilitate training, develop demand response plans, um, ensure that uh, you are um, able to perform if and when called upon. Um, and, and ultimately, at the end of the day, um, we're, we're doing this as well, so then you can benefit from the commercial value that demand response presents. And so um, on the day, if there is an instance where you can't perform because you're, you're, um, you, know, uh, you don't want to compromise the quality of your, of your product, um, and so there's a, there's a decision there that you can't participate, there are no penalties. There are no, um, you know, there, yeah. There's no penalties, and there's no obligation for you to participate on the day. Uh, but obviously, we'll try to encourage you as much as possible um, if you're fit and able to. 
Okay, um, that looks like to be the most of it. So, um, so yeah, if you're interested, guys, please reach out. Uh, you've, you've got an email address there or a phone number. Um, uh, yeah, by all means, um, send us an email if you're interested. Leave your 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 name and contact details and your company, and one of us from the engineering team will reach out to you to work through whether this program is appropriate for you. Um, guys, again, um, you know, this is this is a big opportunity to, to get involved and, and access the available funding that SA government have, you know, um, have uh, graciously uh, put forward. Um, you know, we, we are talking, you know, on the KWatch controller, we are talking up to, you know, over $10,000 worth of, worth of services and goods there. Um, beyond you know beyond ten thousand dollars there, and then depending on the control systems, similarly um, you know based on your site, we are talking potentially tens of more thousands of dollars of of equipment that can be supplied and installed across your sites as well. So it's not small, you know, not small numbers. Um, you know we're 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 really we're really uh, trying to do our best to to push demand response across the grid, and um, and we'd be eager to to speak with you if this uh, if you think this is right for you. So, um, so really, guys, uh, thanks very much for your time, uh, Steve and Brad. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys coming on board as well. So, um, yeah, thanks very much, guys, and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll hear from you soon. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Catch up.